behind waiting for the panels. Um, so you deal with that and you get going on what you can. Um, the other uh, setback, uh, which turns out to actually be um, a very good thing, is uh, I am trained in oils. Uh, that's what I started painting with. That's what I uh, did the murals and the pictorials and billboards with. And I'm getting ready to order my oils and I end up speaking with a gal um, who enlightens me about the new products on the market, acrylics. Never used acrylics before. Um, well, tell me more about it. Well, I start looking at pictures, I start looking at the colors and the intensity. Um, okay, but acrylics are completely different. You use completely different brushes. You use, it's different makeup. The polymer, everything about it is different. And I'm looking at the colors and how well I'm understanding these colors mix and everything and the dry time and there's no odors, there's no chemicals. I pull the trigger and decide, I'm gonna go with acrylics. Now suddenly I have to educate myself from ground zero about acrylics. So yeah, the process of doing something like this um, is, is rather extensive. Um, and I will try to minimize it, but with a print like this, this is like none other than I've done, um, simply because of the, the amount of layering that happens. Um, in this particular print, there's so much going on. So when you paint something like this, for me, I start from the furthest point in the back that I can. This point being the way back sky. I spot in all my quick colors, I get the just of the colors and the layout. Then I come back over that and I do my second layer of clouds. Um, a good example is, <clears throat> I can't just do the driveway, so I had to paint the entire background driveway with all my background colors. And then I can't paint my mailbox until the driveway's done. Well, I can't paint the grass in the foreground until the mailbox is done because the grass has got to come up over the mailbox. So there, you, you see the, the layering and stuff. There's things you can paint and you can't paint. Then basically once you plan all that out <clears throat> between uh, having uh, shots that I've enlarged to, for quick reference, nothing to do with color, but just shadows, lights and darks. I like to get images that are actually darker than what I'm painting because when you darken a, a, a photo like this, your shadows and lights and darks become that much more intense. So it's easier for me to look at that and pick up my dark areas quickly and my light areas. Then I'll go to my phone, uh, which I've put all the prints into, and I can actually I just tape that right onto my, my palette. And I can scroll through and zoom in and zoom out and get every single little detail on the print as I'm sitting here painting, looking back and forth. Um, a lot of times, uh, especially early on, in a piece like this, because it's so big, I kind of joke about it uh, to my girlfriend Kelly. She, I said, it's like a dance when you're in here because you got to go up so close, do your stuff, and then you come back, and you got your palette and your brush, and you know, and I got the music going, and it is, it's, it's a strange dance. <laughs> I stayed at when he was painting it, and when he first started out, I said, okay, Dave, I'm not gonna come over here and look at it, because I want to be like everybody else in town. I want to, you know, all of a sudden it's there, and if, the uh, when they unveiled it on Saturday, I think the crowd. I yeah, I was kind of listening to the crowd, and there was this kind of almost just a gasp <laughs> when the thing was complete. But uh, a lot of people that that uh, will stop by um, and start looking and seeing, you know, this stuff piled up all over the place, um, which is still wet. Um, just kind of look at it like what the heck is that you know so the explanation with that um, you know here's a few but I've got them piled over there I've got them piled behind you um, probably well over a hundred pieces of, uh, of, of the palette paper uh, this is where I sit down and mix all my colors uh, for each individual piece uh, for example well let's just say the mailbox and this is a simple one there's probably eight colors in that um, so I've got to pick all those colors out of the print, then I've got to mix them up on the palette and get ready to paint. So every time I finish one individual little thing, then I'll, I'll categ uh, categorize it. Um, I'll write down what the colors are. If there's certain percents, 80% burnt umber, you know, or Indian yellow, 5%, uh, then they sit to the side. And once they've all dried, I'll, ca I'll basically put them in a folder. They're labeled mailbox. They'll have uh, information as to you know what like I said what the mixtures were and stuff and then that will go into the file and then uh, if at any point in time I have to reproduce that 
I can just simply go to the catalog and pull out those colors um, if I should forget uh, what was put in there. Because sometimes I'll, still, I'll have the colors down, um, but I didn't do a percent. So I try to mix them up and I forget, oh, that's right, it was only 5% of this and 10% of that, and it wasn't right. So I could just continually uh, pull these out as needed. Um, and I've done it a few times already. Uh, the sky, initially the sky was made up of, of many colors and I had to come back and fix uh, horizon lines up here that I didn't like. And I couldn't, I couldn't figure out the mixture I had because I was actually mixing as I went. And um, I had to go back to my catalog, I pulled them out, and sure enough, I had every percent marked down and within probably 20 minutes I had it all mixed up and I went up and you can't even tell where I repainted over it. I think the town can be pretty proud of both Las Cuba and Dave. Uh, for having put it together and I certainly also thank the, the people who funded it. They've tried to be kind of quiet behind the scenes which is fine and but it that's a very important part of this sort of thing and I think Dave's already started to talk. There's a couple more people that have talked about projects. Um, I don't know if anything will happen this year we're starting to run out of weather here pretty quick, but uh, that can happen. First off, Dave Kramer was nice enough, he can't be here today, he's out of town, but uh, the location that was picked, he was on board right away with it. He thought the idea was great. Uh, so thanks to Dave. Um, CNC Striping and Contracting, Tom Kerrigan and uh, Rodney McGrath, or Mark Graff, helped put up all the framework and actually put the panels up uh, just yesterday. So that went well. Uh, again, Jim Fahey, um, Lori Pickle from the museum, uh, you're going to meet here shortly our mayor, Gary Forcier. Uh, Red and Linda from the theater supply some popcorn and of course uh, Coca-Cola. And uh, Mark and Ashley from Below Zero were kind enough to step up, reopen up for the event to serve some ice cream and yogurt. Uh, the Hutch PD for coming down and blocking off the streets and stuff, getting things ready. And of course George Quast earlier, a little entertainment prior to this. We've got, uh, uh, I guess, most important for me is my family. Um, my parents, Virgil and Virginia, they're over here. Uh, they, they're responsible for giving me a lot of this talent. Um, so thank you for that. Uh, my two sons, Adam and Zach, up here by the uh, curtain. They've been helping out quite a bit. My girlfriend, Kelly. Uh, they've all been real supportive of this. It's been about a year and a half since I started uh, the initial idea. Uh, essentially just woke up one morning and thought this would be a grand idea for Hutch. Uh, started the process and uh, everybody embraced it in Hutch. Everybody that I talked to stepped up, wanted to help out some way. So it's really turned out well. Um, and then, the, the time frame and the cost to do something like this is extensive. So uh, I went out and I gathered up a group of people to help finance the project. And once again, they were all open arms on it. Um, and so I'd like to list their names in no particular order. Um, these guys are responsible for making this happen. Uh, we've got Emmett McCormick, Buzz Birch, Ian McDonald, Dr. David Mock, Mark and Wendy Sherman, Richard Westland, and uh, Mike Faber of Coca-Cola. So let's give them a round of applause because they're the ones that made it happen. And I have a quote here from Cuba on this particular piece. And it says, I hope you enjoy the painting, not only for its charm and its nostalgia, but also for its recorded history of America growing up in the countryside. 
I've tried to make the past real for those in this generation as well. We share a lament for what we as people have lost from these earlier times. But as long as the wild geese fly overhead, we can share their faith and hope for the future. Signed, Les C. Cuba, 1991. Um, and that is really what this picture is all about to most people. It's a, 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 a caption or a, a snapshot, I should say, of time um, that no longer really exists, where the general store was the hub of the community. That's where you got your mail, because the post office a lot of times was there. It's where you purchased your supplies, maybe heard a little gossip, <laughs> figure out what was going on in town without going into town. Um, and, and it really is great to have that, not only for people who lived and experienced it like Cuba growing up, but for future generations. And that's why it's a wonderful thing to have here at the McLeod County Historical Museum.